Few senators introducing a bill that would give sweeping protections for in vitro fertilization, or IVF. Alabama Senator Katie Britt and T Senator Ted Cruz co-authored this bill that would cut off any state that bans IVF. This comes after Alabama initially stopped IVF treatment, a decision that has since reversed. Joining us now are the authors of the bill, Alabama Senator Katie Britt and the only conservative senator from my beloved home state of Texas, Ted Cruz. Welcome to you both. Senator Britt, ladies first, I want to start with you. Detail the bill and why you think it's important that it be made into law. Yeah, so obviously you referenced what happened in Alabama with um, the Supreme Court ruling and that, that kind of having a chilling effect on IVF throughout the state. And as that happened, I had a number of women come up to me, talk to me about their IVF journey, some of which were in the middle of those procedures. And I believe that we're the party of life, and I believe that we're the party of families. And so making sure that we protect IVF and protect that moving forward was critically important. And when you hear these women's stories, these couples' stories, these family stories, it tugs on your heartstrings. And you know that we have so many beautiful children across this whole country that wouldn't be here if it weren't for this process and this procedure. And so Ted and I wanted to make sure that that was protected moving forward. Senator Cruz, as Senator Bridge just articulated, conservatives are very concerned with, with life. They value life and concerned about the human beings that are being created, though, in the in vitro fertilization process. What protections are on the bill so that viable human life created through this scientific process isn't simply flushed down the drain? Well, this bill leaves those decisions as it is right now, currently, to the states. And what this bill says is that no state can ban in vitro fertilization. And, and it says that because in, in the wake of the Alabama Supreme Court decision, I think there was enormous confusion, there was an enormous fear. And, and, and as Katie said, I, I think IVF has been a miraculous technology for, for helping parents that desperately want to bring a child into the world become parents, helping them become moms and dads, helping them welcome a little girl, a little boy into their lives, and, it, and it's transformational. You know, Chris, the numbers are, are astonishing. Two percent of all the births in America come from IVF. Uh, there have been over eight million babies born through IVF, and I think IVF is, is a powerfully life-affirming technology, helping parents. We both have a lot of close friends who, who very much wanted to be parents and who needed IVF because they, they couldn't conceive on their own and they desperately wanted to be parents. And so what this bill does, to the best of my knowledge, every single senator agrees with that proposition. I believe all 100 senators, Republicans and Democrats, support IVF and, 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 and are committed to making sure it remains legal. What this bill does is it puts into federal law that this is a right you have to have access to IVF. Uh, and, and, and so there's no risk it will be taken away, no risk it will be banned. And part of why we introduced this is because there's a lot of deliberate fear-mongering, I think, by Democrats and, and by a lot of folks in the corporate media that are trying to scare people and suggest that, that, that the mean old Republicans are, are, are going to ban IVF. That would be a terrible idea. Uh, and, and we're introducing this legislation and we're fighting hard to get it passed. So, so, so that everyone can know it's protected in federal law, their right to use this technology to become parents. Well, uh, you too, I hope that there is, as you say, Senator Cruz, enough uh, unity to get all 100 senators on board with this. Now, as both of you know, the Senate has another issue that, well, there's not a lot of unity on. Some are laughingly calling an immigration bill that is being pushed once again by Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer mm -hmm. They're laughingly calling this an immigration bill. To remind the folks, this bill would normalize illegal immigration by allowing nearly 2 million illegal aliens a year to come into the United States of America before the government even thinks about getting in their way. It also weakens the already lax asylum laws, in my view. The procedural vote, which needs 60 votes to advance, will take place later this week. And Senator Britt, a new Reuters Ipsos poll finds that a whopping 56% of registered voters want illegal aliens expelled out of this nation. How much longer do you think Congress will try to legislate against the will of the American people on illegal immigration? 
Look, I mean, obviously what we're going to see from Chuck Schumer is a political stunt. And all of this lays at the feet of Joe Biden. Yep. When he came into office, he did 94 executive orders in the first 100 days. He said, we're going to stop building the wall, we're going to halt deportations, and we're going to get amnesty to millions. His policies and lack thereof have acted as a magnet for millions and millions and millions to come here. He knows how to stop it. He could put these executive orders into place. This is why we need President Trump in November yeah. to win the election. And I'll, I'll tell you, there's been no one fighting harder, obviously, than Senator Cruz and myself in making sure that we can secure the border, um, you know, detain, deport, um, and, and bring safety and security back to our streets. Now, to that point, Senator Cruz, you told our team you had, you had some news regarding the, House, the House's conservative immigration bill, H.R. 2. What's the news? Well, in just a few minutes, I'm going to go to the Senate floor and I'm going to try to pass H.R. 2 again. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to seek unanimous consent to pass it. If Democrats really want to secure the border, there's a vehicle to do so. The House has already passed this bill. If the Senate passed it, it would go straight to Joe Biden's desk. And by the way, all the Democrats have to do is nothing. If they just do nothing, H.R. 2 would pass the Senate in about a half hour. But you know what? They're not going to do nothing. What they're going to do? is they're going to stand up and they're going to say two magic words, I object. Because Chuck Schumer doesn't want border security. The Democrats don't want border security. Every single Democrat in the Senate supports these open borders. And I can say that because every single time we push to, to implement real border security, to stop this invasion, to stop Joe Biden from releasing criminal illegal aliens that are threatening our families, Every single Democrat votes no. And so I'm going to take it up. I'm going to push it. But the Democrats are going to object. And then they're going to have their show vote later this week where they vote for, as you rightly noted, Chris, a terrible bill that would make the problem worse, that would put into federal law Joe Biden's catch and release policies. It's going to fail. They know that. But the purpose of it is Biden wants the Democrats to go around and pretend, see, we tried to do something on border security, but the Republicans wouldn't let us. Senators Katie Britt and Ted Cruz, thank you very much. Appreciate the time, guys. Keep us posted on how the IVF bill plays out.